In this video, we'll see the work energy principle for solving such types of problem. That means the particle will just move from position A to the final positions of its destination. And then during this process, what the velocities will of the particle have. And then the other one, how the normal force could be applied on the block by the guide will be analyzed. So the equation just say that the smallest layer of mass M is released from rest while in position A and then slides along the vertical plane track. The track is smooth from A to D and then rough, that means having the coefficient of kinetic friction there from the point D on. So determine the normal force N be exerted by the track on the slider just after it passes point B. And then the normal force NC exerted by the track on the slider as it passes the bottom point C. And then C, the distance as traveled along the incline past point D before the slider stops. So this is just the overall expression. As you even look over the animation, so the particle will start its journey from A and then it will pass through point B and then point C and then point D. Finally, since there is a kinetic friction after the point D, the particle will stop its journey. So this is the overall animations of the particle. So we can apply work and energy principle for solving this problem. In this video for the frictional force cases, the frictional force coefficient is taken as mu s, that means for static part, but it is not as a static part. We have to consider this one as a kinetic friction, but don't worry about that. Just substitute the value of mu s with mu k. So let's see the solution part. Now let's start from the given part. So the given part is mentioned on the diagram. So we know the overall geometry, but instead of that, let's just write what the main positions are given. That means velocity at position A is zero because it starts from rest. And then finally, the object will stop at the point where uh, let's say this is at point E, let's say this is a point E, so at velocity at point E will be zero. And then the other thing is there is no friction, that means coefficients of static friction from uh, point A up to D is uh, zero, but there will be a friction after point D, so those are the given parameter. The required part is to evaluate the normal force in case of A, normal force at point B, the normal force at point C, and then the maximum distance which the object can travel. Those are the unknown parameters. So we have to evaluate them. To evaluate the normal force at the position B, we have to know about the velocity properties when the particle reaches on point B. So let's just write this part the first part from point A up to point B. If we could just apply work energy principle, let's see the energy available at position A. So in the position A, let's see what the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is half m v a squared. In this case, the initial velocity is zero, so there is no any kinetic energy. What will be the potential energy in this case? The potential energy is m g h now the initial position and then between the initial and the final position we have a distances of 2r so this is the distance from point a up to point b this is 2r so since it is 2r then the potential energy will be mg times 2r so potential energy finally is 2mgr so this is the potential energy now when we come to the point b let's see the kinetic energy so the kinetic energy will be half m v b squared. Since we have a velocity there, we'll have this much kinetic energy, and then the potential energy in this case will be zero because we are considering the portion from initial position to the final position from point A to point B. This is our final destination. If the particle is reached over here, it may not have any more potential energy. So those are the two energies. Now let's apply the work energy principle. That means the energy at the initial position, in this case, the energy at point A, plus work done from A up to B. That means from the initial to the final point, 
as equal to final energies related to the kinetic and the potential energy. So let's sum up that one. So Ta is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy at point A plus work then from A up to B is equal to the energy at point B. That means kinetic energy plus potential energy at point B. In this case, we know that there is no external force applied here, so there is no any external work done here. That means it will be zero, and then we know that the kinetic energy is zero on the point A, so the only energy at the positions of A is the potential energy, which is equal to 2m times g times r. So potential energy is equal to, in the positions of B, we have only kinetic energy, that means it will be half m v b square because the potential energy at point b is zero so finally if we just crisscross this part we can get the velocity of b square is equal to 4 m g r over m and then m will cancel out this so finally velocity of b square is equal to 4 g r and then if we need the velocity of b we can just square root of this so it will be under radical for gr. So this is the velocity when the particle reach at position b. Now let's evaluate the normal force which is applied by the guide on the slider point at the position of b. So we know that it is on the vertical direction and then we will have the normal force in this direction. We know that this is in the normal direction and then this one is in the tangential direction. So we have this part as in the downward direction we have mass times gravity or the weight of the object at this position so submission of force in the normal direction will be equal to mass times acceleration in the normal direction now in the normal direction we have only one normal force that means n which is n is equal to mass times acceleration which is a normal acceleration so we have no any other external force in the normal direction so we can simply get the normal force at point B. This is when at the positions of B. So normal force is equal to mass times now acceleration. That means in the normal acceleration is at point B is velocity of B square over radius of curvature. In this case, this is R. So M times V square over R will be the normal acceleration. And then if you substitute the numerical values, we'll get the normal force. So normal force is equal to mass times velocity of B square is previously evaluated and then it was 4 times gr so 4 times g r over r so r will cancel out and then finally the normal force at position b is equal to 4 m times g so this is our answer so let's say this is our answer so this is the force or the normal force when the particle reach over the position B. Now, what about the normal force when the particle try to pass or when reach over the position C? So we have to evaluate the normal force at point C. So to evaluate it, first we have to know all the parameters related to this point. That means to know that we have to know the velocity at point C. So to evaluate the velocity at point C, let's take the movements of the particle from point B to point C or even we can use from point A up to point C it doesn't matter but we can use just from point B to point C so to do this let's have this circular part or the circular ways of the particle that means this is position B and then this is position C and then we know that in this case if this is the final destination of the system so we'll have the elevations of R from this point to this one. So if you have that elevation, we'll have a potential energy at point B. And then that potential energy is potential energy is equal to mgh. In this case, the height is R, so it will be mg times R. And then the kinetic energy will be kinetic energy of the system will be half m velocity. In this case, is velocity at B squared. So this is the energy at point B. What about the energy at point C? The energy at point C, since the particle will reach over this, it might not have any potential energy, so its potential energy will convert into the kinetic energy, so potential energy at this position will be zero. And then the kinetic energy of the system at point C will be half m times velocity of C squared. 
So if we just apply energy work principle, so we know that the initial energy is just TB plus work then from position B to position C is equal to the final energy, which is equal to TC. So we have this. Now, if we substitute all these numerical values into this or this equation, so we'll have in the position B, we have mg r plus half m v b squared. Since there is no any external force, so work them from b up to c will be zero. So which is equal to the only force or the, the only energy at position c is kinetic energy, which is half m v c squared. So in this case, you can cancel out the mass over it because it is common in every uh, where. So we know the values of vb squared. So the only unknown parameter here will be velocity of c squared. So velocity of c squared is equal to 2 times gr plus vb squared. So this will be the velocity of c. So if you just rearrange this, that means velocity of c squared is equal to 2gr plus Velocity of B in this case is evaluated previously. So the velocity of B squared is equal to 4 GR. So plus 4 GR. And then finally, it will be velocity of C squared is equal to 6 times GR. So this is the velocity squared when the particle is reached over position C. Let's take out the free body diagrams for the normal force. In this case, we know that the particle will be guided by the paths on the lower part. So the normal force will be in the upward direction. That means it is in the normal direction. And then this one will be tangential direction. And then we know that the gravity is in the downward direction. So mg will be in the lower part. So summation of force in the normal direction will be mass times the acceleration at that position. So the normal force in this case is n minus mg is equal to mass times acceleration in this case is vc square over r. So we'll have this value. So n finally will be mg plus m times vc square over r. So it's indicated that n will be is equal to mg plus m times vc squared is 6gr over r, so r will cancel out this, and then finally, n will be mg plus 6 times mg, and then finally, if you sum up this, it will be n is equal to 7 times mg. So this is our answer when the normal force is reached at the position c. So this is our answer. Let's call it this is as answer. Now to evaluate the distance, which is the maximum distance from point D up to point E, which means when the particle try to stop, we have to know the velocity at point D. So to evaluate the velocity of at point D, let's take our initial position as B and then the final position is as D. If we take that, we'll see, since there is no any external force, we'll see that the kinetic energy at point B and the kinetic energy at point D will be the same because they are horizontally aligned. Now let's see this one. So if we just take this part, so this is just like this one, and then we know this is point B, and then this is point D. Since there is no any elevation, there might not be any potential energy in the both cases. So potential energy at point B is equal to zero. And then the kinetic energy at point B is equal to half mvb squared. No other energies are there. And then when we come to the point D, we have no any potential energy, that means it might not be zero, and then we have a kinetic energy is equal to half mv d squared. We know that from point D, from point B to point D, there is no any external work. Since there is no any external work, work then from point B up to point D is also zero. In this case, we might know that the energy at point B plus work then from B up to D is equal to the energy at point D. So this is zero. That means if you substitute all those equations, we will have half m v b squared is equal to half m v d squared. In the other case, we know that v d squared is equal to 
VB squared. And previously, VB squared were evaluated if it was for GR. So we know the value of VB. Now, let's take out the segment from point B to point E. That means this portion will be point D, and then the final point is point E. And then we know the distance between them is just S. And since there is a frictional force, we will have a coefficient of mu s there. And then the angle or the inclinations will be 30 degree here. Okay, do you know why this is a 30 degree? So let's see from the geometry part. Now, if we extend, let's extend one horizontal line in this way, and then see what will the angles be. Now, we know that this is 30 degree. Since this is 30 degree, and this part and this part is perpendicular, we know that this portion, the two parts make 90 degree, that means this angle is a 90 degree, so since this is 30 degree, it will become, this portion will be 60 degree. So this part will be 60 degree, this is 90 degree, if this is 90 degree, it will become 30 degree, and then this is the opposite angle of this, so it will become also equal to this one. So this part will be 30 degree. That is why this inclined surface is at an angle of 30 degree. Now let's evaluate the energy at point D. So the energy at point D, let's see the potential energies. There is no any elevation at point D, so it will be zero. And then the kinetic energy is equal to half m, in this case, velocity of D squared. So we'll have these two energies. And then when we see at point E, let's evaluate that. So the potential energy is equal to mgh. In this case, what will be the h value? So this is the h value. So this is h. Since it is h, that means this is s times sine 30 degree. So potential energy will be is equal to m times g times s times sine 30 degree. So the h component is s sine 30 degree. Then the kinetic energy at point B is kinetic energy at point A will be zero because the velocity of E is zero. So kinetic energy is zero because the object will stop at point E. So we have no any kinetic energy. So the only energy will be the potential energy. But we have a work done here. That means due to the frictional force. So we'll have a negative work done. So work done from point D to point E will be frictional force times the distance s. So this is the work done on the system, but it is the negative sign because it opposes the system. So this is just the work done from point D to point E. How we can evaluate the frictional force now? To evaluate the frictional force, let's take out the free body diagrams of the particle. That means it is inclined at 30 degree. We know that. So this is a particle at the any position. And then this is at the inclines of theta or a 30 degree. We know that in the downward direction we'll have mg. And then perpendicular to this, we will have a normal direction n, normal force n. And this is at the inclinations of theta. And then we know that summation of force in the normal direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the normal direction. In this case, since there is no any motion in the normal direction, there might not be any normal acceleration, so summation of force in the normal direction finally will be zero. So in this case, what is the force in the normal direction? In the normal direction, we have two components of force, that means the normal force or the supporting force N, and then the components of the weight into that direction. That means the cause function or the cause values of mg will be on the normal direction. In general, it is this just like for the clarification, it is a tangential direction now. So, summation of force in the normal direction will be zero. This implies that m minus mg cos theta, or in this case 30 degree, is equal to zero. That means the normal force is equal to mg cos 30 degree. This is the normal force on the system. Now, how we evaluate the frictional force? So, the frictional force F is equal to static friction coefficient times normal force. That means it will be equal to mu s times mg cos 30 degree. This is the frictional force. We know that the work done from point D up to E is equal to negative of fs times distance s, so which is equal to 
s times the previous value, that means negative of mu s times mg cos 30 degree times distance s. So this is the work done from point D to point E. We know that cos 30 degree is rho 3 over 2, so work done from point D up to E finally will be is equals to negative of mu s times root 3 over 2 times m times g times distance s. So this is the work done from point D to point E. Now, if we apply work energy principle, we know that the energy at point D plus work done from point D up to E is equal to energy at point E. Now let's substitute all these values. Previously, we know that at point D we have only kinetic energy, that means it will be half mvd squared plus work done in this case is negative mu s times root 3 over 2 times m times g times s is equal to now the kinetic the energy at point e is only a potential energy which is equal to mg times s times sine 30 degree in this case sine 30 degree is 1 over 2 so in this case m is common so it can be cancelled out so we cancelled out m and then we can just collect the s values here is the s value and then here is the s value if you collect the like term then finally we can get the values of s this implies that half g times s plus root 3 over 2 mu s times g times s is equal to half v d squared so the half part will be also cancelled so we cancel cancel the lower part of 2 so finally we'll have g s plus rho 3 mu s g s is equal to half v d squared so if s is as a common so s times g in bracket plus root 3 times mu s g is equal to v d squared so finally s can be equal to vd squared over g can be common in this case so 1 plus root 3 mu s and the value of vd squared is previously evaluated and then it is equivalent to 4 times g times r so let's substitute this value that means s will become 4 gr over g in bracket 1 plus root 3 times mu s so g will cancelled out so finally s could be is equal to 4 times r over 1 plus root 3 mu s so this is our final answer for the maximum distance which could be traveled by the particle before it comes to rest so this is it